Hello everyone. I made this short video to describe how to use the bitmap display in Mars and instructions for our next homework. In the GitHub, I have this PDF that we see here. It's a tutorial for how to use Mars bitmap and the keyboard. To open that up, you assemble a program and I have two sample programs in the GitHub that you can download and test this with. You first assemble then go to Tools and then Bitmap Display and you'll see something like this pop up. You'll need to connect it to MIPS. So here's the display. The top left corner has coordinates 00, 0 and that's mapped to this address in the data segment. This is actually the start of the data segment. The default values are a pixel size of 1 by 1 so that'll be a very small little pixel. And then the color you specify as a 24-bit RGB value. So the default is all zeros, which is black, what we see here. If we want to display something, is store a word at a given location that has a color that's non-black. If we want to return a value back to black, we just store zero at that location. I have a link here to some RGB color codes. Notice also you can change the dimensions of the display. So let's see how this actually works in a program. This is bitmap1.asm, one of the two programs I have in the GitHub. We'll talk about how it works in a minute. First I just want to talk about how to run it. It's a good idea to have some comments so that people know how to use your program. So I have the pixel dimensions set to 4x4 the display dimensions to 256 by 256. Then I go to Tools, Bitmap Display, change my settings to 4x4, 256 to 256. I leave this one alone for this program. I connect to MIPS and then I hit Run. And all this program did is write three pixels in roughly the center of the screen. There's a red one, a cyan one, and a blue one. All right, not terribly exciting, but it's a starting point. Let's talk about how this works. In this program, I use an assembler directive we haven't used before, .eqv. You'll have a label followed by a value. And what will happen is that the assembler, before it assembles, it will go through wherever you had width and replace it by 64. The width of the screen I set up to be 256 by 256, but if each pixel takes up 4 by 4, that means I can have 64 pixels across and 64 pixels up and down. I don't need a dot data section, and I'm going to have the start of my memory at what actually is the start of the data section. If you type EQV, you'll get a pop-up that tells you how it works. You're going to substitute the second operand for the first. Your first operand is a symbol and the second is an expression. It's kind of like pound sign define in C. I also created the equivalents for three colors, red, blue, green. And here's the crux of RGB. All ones here in the red location, all ones here in the green location, and all ones here in the blue location. For RGB, we're never going to be using these upper bits. So this makes the coding a little easier. I can just say red, and before the assembler assembles, it will replace everywhere I said red with this hex value. Let's look at the code. I have a subroutine called draw pixel. It expects A0 and A1 to be the XY coordinates and A2 to be the color. We're going to be thinking of X and Y like a grid, row, column. But we know that in reality, memory is stored just one byte after the other. There is no grid. It would be more accurate to consider the first location of row 2 to actually be over here. Let's say, for example, we had a location at 2, 3. x equals 2, y equals 3. That would correspond to an offset of 3 times our width, which is 64, plus 2. So the number of rows times 64 plus 2. And then we'd have to multiply that by 4 to get the word offset and add it to the base address of memory. That's what we see in this comment here. 
We multiply y times our width, add that to x, and then multiply that quantity by 4 for the word offset, and add it to the memory offset. So that's what I'm implementing in this code here. I'm multiplying width times y, putting the result in s1, and then I'm adding the x value. Then I'm multiplying it by 4, and then I'm adding the offset of memory. And so writing the pixel is simply a matter of store word, my color, at that location and returning. So back up here in main, I'm going to call this draw pixel function three times. I'm roughly determining the center of the screen by taking width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. I'm using shift right arithmetic. Think of it as divide by 2 but with truncation. And I'm using that to set up A0 and A1 to be roughly the center of the screen. I want my first color to be red. So now I can just draw a pixel. And that will draw the red pixel. Now I want to draw a green one to the right. All I have to do now is add 1 to A0 because my draw pixel function is going to take care of translating this into an address. I'm going to make my color green and draw a pixel. I want to draw a blue pixel to the right, so I add 1 to X, put in my color blue, and draw the pixel. So let's see that one more time. I'm going to set a breakpoint before my first draw pixel, and then I'll set a breakpoint right after it. We see it drew the red pixel. Let me set another breakpoint right after the next draw that drew the green one. I think I called it cyan earlier. And then I'll set a breakpoint after the next one. We see it drew the blue one there. In this first program, the memory map data was stored at the start of the data section. That would make it difficult to add other memory locations that the program may need. So another approach is to set up program data in a dot data section and then use the area starting at $GP for global pointer for the MMIO data. I'll demonstrate that in the second program. We're going to use GP as the base address and we'll slightly change our pixel size. We'll have bigger pixels this time. This will make a slight change in our draw pixel. We'll just be adding it to GP instead of MIM. The second program in the GitHub not only uses the bitmap display, it also uses the keyboard simulator. So let's see what that looks like before we actually look at the code. I set up my 8x8 pixel size. The display is 256 by 256 and I changed the base address to GP. Let me put that aside. Now I'm going to go to Tools, Keyboard, and MMIO Simulator. Got to connect each of these to MIPS. And what we'll do is type in this area. Let's run the program. And we see that it just draws a big red pixel. If I type W, it goes up. If I type S, it goes down. If I type A, it goes left. And if I type D, it goes right. The memory mapped I.O. keyboard uses 64K of memory from addresses hex FFFF0000 to hex all Fs. There are two special locations we can think of like registers within this memory. There's a control register and a data register. This location here, which we're going to load into T0, it will hold whether or not input is available. So we're going to keep looping here until we get some input. Once we get some input, that will be at this location, which we're going to load into S1. So we've gotten some input from the user. We want to check, is it a space? That's decimal 32 in ASCII. Is it W? It's decimal 119. And then is it S, A, and D? If it's invalid, we're just going to ignore it and jump back up here to the loop. If they input a space, we're actually going to quit. If they input any of these other values, 
that we're checking for, WSAD, we're going to go to up, down, left, and right, which are here. First thing we want to do to move the pixel is actually to draw it as black. So we put the color 0 into A2 and draw the pixel. If we want to go up, we want to modify Y, which is an A1, by negative 1, put in our color again and draw it and jump back up to loop. So we follow this same pattern for up, down, left, and right. If we want it to move up and down, we'll adjust the Y value in A1 by positive or negative 1. And if we want it to go left and right, we'll adjust the X value in A0 by positive 1 or negative 1. Let's look at the next homework, which will give you a chance to use this memory mapped I.O. as well as the keyboard. It's going to be worth 200 points. The first thing you'll do is write a function to draw a box on the bitmap display. Roughly in the center of the screen, if you notice here, mine is not so much in the center of the screen, though it looks like I started, but in the act of drawing the box, I'm a little bit off. So roughly in the center of the screen, draw a box. Draw it one pixel at a time using four loops. So there's a loop for the top, for the side, loop for the bottom, loop for the other side. To make step one easier, just make the box red. Alright, so that's your first objective, is just to draw a red box in the center of the screen. Then you want to modify your function to have a marquee effect by drawing each pixel in a color from an array of colors. So here's an, more or less an array of colors that I've created. First I did the equivalence of different colors and their hex values, and then I put them in, a, in an array here. You've got to slow this down or it'll just be a blur and you won't really get the marquee effect by adding a pause function between pixel writes and make a 5 millisecond delay. I'll show you how to do that with syscall32. And then add some keyboard functionality, WSAD, to move it around. The space key should terminate the program. So let's see a sample run. You can see the marquee effect. The colors kind of swirl around there. And I should be able to move it up, down, left, or right and left, sorry. One thing I'll tell you about this system is if you go crazy and hit a bunch of keys in rapid succession, it's very likely to lock this up. So don't think that it's anything wrong with your code. That's just a limitation of this environment here. So you want to type your keys fairly slowly. Let me hit stop. On the second page, I have the grading rubric. And this is how you can think of the box. Draw seven pixels across, and then you could move over, draw seven down, draw seven going this way, draw 7 going that way. You technically end up with more than 7. Notice I end up with 8 across here and 8 across here by drawing 7, 7, 7, 7 in this pattern. Now don't obsess over the number of pixels. I'm including this just so you can see one way of doing it. I'm not really concerned about the exact number of pixels. I mentioned that I would talk about syscall number 32 here, which just is going to waste 5 milliseconds of time between pixel draws. And I do that to make the marquee effect slow down. Let's see what happens if I comment this out. I can do that just by commenting out the syscall. And then run it again, and you can see the marquee effect is going so fast that I really can't see anything. So let's put it back and compare the difference. So now it's slowed down a bit, I can see it. In addition to the pause function, you'll have a draw box instead of draw pixel. And you'll probably need a helper function to help you rotate through the colors. But how you implement that is really up to you. I think this is kind of a, a fun assignment. And it will get you thinking about the world of game programming and all that goes into it. And you might be inspired to create your own game.